Thank you guys for all coming today. I am Billy Lister. I am coming on behalf of the North Carolina Department of Insurance and I work specifically with the SHIP department. That's with a P. S-H-I-I-P. It stands for Seniors Health Insurance Information Program. And I am a hometown girl. I grew up here in McDowell County. So, and that's how you know I'm from here because I say McDowell. <laughs> I got it right, didn't I? And that's how you know I'm real. But, um, so I'm, I'm very happy to be here, but I'm here to talk to you about Medicare. And I know you hear a whole lot on TV, don't you? There's all those Joe Namath commercials and everything. So I'm here to just give you the facts. I don't represent an insurance company. Um, I'm literally just a Medicare educator. So I have no dog in the fight. <laughs> yep, yay. So unbiased information is what I'm going to present to you today. And I'm very, very happy to be invited by Waylon. He is the Senior Center Director here. And he operates the SHIP department here in McDowell County. So if you need any help with your Medicare, he is your man. You'll contact him and he'll take good care of you. Um, all right, so let's get started. This is Medicare the Basics. It's everything you need to know as you're approaching Medicare. So when you approach Medicare, you're going to get a Medicare card. And I want to first point out the fact that Medicare cards have changed. They used to have our Social Security numbers on them, which was not necessarily a good thing, right? So now they don't. It's, it's a random alphanumeric code. And it, so everybody's going to be different, of course, but that Medicare number is what we'll need to help you when you come to SHIP. You'll bring your Medicare card in and we'll help you talk about plans and options. Okay, so what is Medicare? Well, basically, it is a federally funded individual health insurance program. And so it's not that, it's not like affordable care where you put your family on it. It's just going to serve you or your spouse. Um, but it's going to cover you for medically necessary procedures and services. So we're not talking about liposuction or, you know, you just want to get a, a facelift. It's not going to cover things like that. But it is going to help you for all those medically necessary um, procedures that you need, including medications when you take your Part D plan. So let's talk about who's eligible for Medicare. Well, once you're 65, if you have participated in the Social Security Retirement System, you're going to be eligible to take Medicare. And if you've worked approximately 10 years, it's going to make it a lot easier <laughs> because you've paid your FICA taxes. That's going to help you afford Medicare Part A. Um, but um, if you're participating in the Social Security Retirement System and you're paying those taxes in, um, you're going to be eligible at age 65. Now, also, if your spouse has participated, that's going to make you eligible, too. If you're an employee of federal, state, or local government, you're also going to be eligible. And if your spouse has worked for local, state, or federal government. Individuals who are 65 or old, uh, who are under 65 but have been awarded Social Security Disability, if you've been on disability for two years, you can transition to Medicaid. And you usually will. And of course, if you have Lou Gehrig's disease or end-stage renal failure, that's also going to make you automatically qualify for Medicare regardless of age. So let's talk about um, who administers Medicare and how you enroll in Medicare. So it's really important that you understand how and when to enroll because there can be penalties if you miss that enrollment period. So original Medicare, A and B, hospital and medical, are actually administered by the um, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, so that's the federal government. And so you will enroll for Medicare through the Social Security Administration. And it's best to contact your local Social Security because it's quicker or to go online, but that is going to be administered by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And so everybody starts with calling the Social Security office. Uh, that's how you're going to enroll initially in Medicare. Regardless of what option you take beyond that, you start there. Now, some folks will not need to contact the Social Security office and enroll because they'll be automatically enrolled. So if you have been taking your Social Security benefit check before age 65, or if you've been on disability for two years, then they're going to automatically enroll you and generate that enrollment on your behalf, okay? 
So you'll get that card in the mail about three months before your 65th birthday or after you've been on disability for two years and you will not have made the call to initiate enrollment. Don't let that panic you, that's normal. Um, when you get it, it'll say if you're gonna keep it, sign it and keep the card. If you want to delay or, or refuse your Medicare, you have to return the card um, to the Social Security office. So with this automatic enrollment, it's easier for you because you were automatically enrolled, but there are still more options. So just because you get your card doesn't mean you're done. I don't want you to get that impression. That's when you have all these decisions to make and where SHIP can really help you make those decisions. We can um, educate and inform so that when you make the decision, it's the one that's right for you because what's right for your mom or what's right for your sister or your neighbor may not be the thing that you need to do. So we want you to understand how your decisions will impact you um, over the long term. All right, so let's talk about if you're not receiving your Social Security or you've not been on disability, when is your initial enrollment period? So your initial enrollment period is actually going to begin three months before your 65th birth month. And then it'll be the month of your 65th birth birthday and then three months following your 65th birthday. So it's really important to catch that initial enrollment period because if you fail to enroll on time, you're subject to a 10% per year penalty for every year you missed. So if you enrolled five years late, you would have 10% each of those five years that will accrue and it will add on to your Part B for the rest of your days. So you want to make sure you hit that enrollment window correctly. And it's very easy to do. Like I said, you're going to call the Social Security office to enroll or you can go online to ssa.gov and enroll that way. So lots of easy ways to do that. Um, some Social Security offices will let you just kind of drop in and enroll but some won't so I would call ahead and make sure um, pre-pandemic you did not have to call ahead and make an appointment but now some offices are still asking you to do that so I would give them a call before I just dropped by and so the great thing about it is when you hit this enrollment period correctly your Medicare coverage actually begins on the first day of the month that you're going to turn 65 so if your 65th birthday is May 17th your benefit will begin May 1st, okay? But if you missed that enrollment period, uh, or you missed enrolling before your 65th birth month, it doesn't go backwards, it's not retroactive. So if you enrolled the month that you turned 65, let's say you enrolled your birthday, May 17th, then your benefit will actually begin the first day of the following month. If you miss it entirely, you have to wait for a general enrollment period. So if you don't enroll in within three months after your 65th birth month, you have to wait until the next year, until January 1st, and hit general enrollment. And at which point, if you didn't have a valid reason for delay, which we'll talk about in a second, um, then you would have that penalty that you would have to deal with. So the general enrollment period is every January 1st through March the 31st every year. That's your opportunity if you missed to jump on board and catch your Medicare in then. Um, so you would enroll during the general enrollment period and your benefits will actually begin the following month. So if you enroll in March, um, you're still in general enrollment, but your benefits begin April the 1st. Alrighty, so if you were working full-time and covered under an employer group health plan, then you are allowed to delay your Part B without penalty later. Now, some folks will go ahead and take Part A because if they've worked 10 years, like we've discussed, then Part A has no premium and you might as well take it, right? So some folks will go ahead and take Part A even if they're still working, but they'll wait for Part B. If that's your case, then all you have to do is when you know that you're going to retire, you'll go ahead and call the Social Security office and you'll initiate that enrollment in Part B at that time. And you will not have the penalty, but you do have to submit some forms and some verification from your employer stating that you were continuously covered under an employer group health plan and working full time. There are a few other little caveats which we'll discuss in a minute. Um, sometimes there are special enrollment periods, so even if you've missed enrollment 
and you miss general enrollment, sometimes you have a special enrollment window. So one of those um, cases would be your retirement. So you're losing your employer plan or you're not, you know, you're not going to work anymore. That opens up a special enrollment window. And if you know if it's retirement, you're going to know that you're retiring probably ahead of time. So go ahead and call the Social Security office as much as three months ahead and initiate that process so that you have a smooth transition. Your employer coverage would end this month and then your Medicare begin the next month. So you can plan that out. If it's sudden or unexpected, just call as soon as you can and initiate that. And again, whatever month you enroll in is going to begin the next month on the first day. So that makes it a little easier. In order to avoid the penalty, your employer has to have at least 20 or more employees. So if you're working and you choose to delay Part B and you're 65, um, you can delay, but your employer has to have 20 employees or more. So if it's due to disability and you're under 65, your employer has to have at least 100 employees. So that's something to think about. So if you're working for a very small business um, or you're self-employed, even if you're still working and you're covered, it's not going to count and get you out of that um, lifetime penalty. So you want to take that into consideration when you're making your decision. All right, so how do you enroll? We talked about this. You're going to call the Social Security office. Um, you can enroll online. You can call. This is the um, national hotline number, 1-800-772-1213. Um, be patient. <laughs> you know, make sure that you're ready to be on hold for a little bit. They are getting much better. Um, the wait times have not been that extreme for me lately, um, but they go through periods. So it depends on what time of year it is and what day of the week it is. But they are open Monday through Friday, 7 to 7, which is great. And you can give them a call and they are super sweet, super easy to work with over the phone. Don't feel like you have to go find your local office. You don't have to show up in person. Um, I really appreciate that because not all of us want to drive to the next town over to enroll. <laughs> so that's really good. So now let's talk about the four main parts of Medicare. And this is the alphabet soup part that um, I feel like most people are very frustrated about. So. If I were truthful, I would say I probably would not have chosen letters for the parts and for the plans because it is confusing. But there are four main parts or components to Medicare. Part A and B are what we lovingly call original Medicare. That's the part managed by the federal government. And A is your hospital and B is medical, so it's going to take care of outpatient, emergency rooms, uh, sick visits, you know, chronic visits that you're going to to specialists and um, things like that that are outpatient related. Part C are Advantage plans and Part C Advantage plans um, are managed care plans. And then we have Part D which is your drug plan. Okay, So they're all very different parts of Medicare and all very important to understand what you have. So I know in my experience I have a lot of uh, the Medicare beneficiaries who come to me every year and I'll say, okay, do you know if you have an original or do you have an Advantage plan? Half the time they don't know. And it's because we've named supplement plans um, the ABCD and we've also named the parts of Medicare ABCD and it can become confusing. So it's important to know what you have and how it works because that's what's going to make this easier for you to manage your health care. So you have to really main paths to Medicare. And this is the big decision that people have to make. Do I want to stick with original Medicare or am I going to take the Advantage plan path? And both of them have pros and cons and some are appropriate for some people and not for others. And so it's, it's important to understand how they each work and that will help you make the best decision for you. And like I said, it may not be the same as your parent or your sister or your neighbor, but everybody's decision has to be very individualized because it's based on individual factors that affect you. So with original Medicare, it is managed by the federal government, but it's not, not managed care. There's no network. You're just going to 
go to whatever provider you want to see as long as they accept Medicare, which is about 99.9% .9 of all providers will take Medicare. And uh, you'll just get the procedures done that you need done. It's really no hoops to jump through. Um, there's just money that you have to pay and money that I want to pay. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But if you take original Medicare, and that's the path you're going to take, you do have the option of selecting a Medicare supplement plan. Which is secondary insurance. It's private companies that are going to help you pay for your co-pays and your deductibles. Um, and you're going to be required to take a Medicare Part D drug plan, which some people elect not to take that plan, but if you decide later that you wanted to take a plan, you would have a penalty for not taking a drug plan. So you want to make sure that you truly aren't going to need drug coverage before you deny taking a Part D plan if you keep original Medicare. Now, if you have an Advantage plan, that's a whole different path. So we'll talk about Advantage plan choices. Um, Advantage plans are managed care, much like employer group health plans. They have a network, and you follow the network, and that is what helps pay for all of your visits. But in addition, they may offer you some extra things, the things we hear about on TV. There may be some transportation. There may be some vision and dental. It depends on the plan that you've chosen, how well that works for you, but you will have a network that you'll need to use. Um, okay, so let's start to break each of those down. So if you keep original Medicare, Medicare Part A hospital is going to cover you anytime you're inpatient. So of course that's hospitalization, but it also includes skilled nursing facilities. So let's say um, you have heart surgery and you need a little extra time and they put you in a skilled nursing facility for a couple of weeks. That would also be covered under Part A. Part B is going to be physical therapy, it's going to be outpatient services of any type, doctor's visits, um, transfusions or chemotherapy infusions that are done outpatient would be covered under Part B. Now blood transfusions and things like that can be covered under Part A if they're done while you're inpatient. Okay, if not, it'll be covered under Part B. Same with hospice. Hospice is usually covered under Part A if you're inpatient and Part B if you're outpatient. It just depends. <laughs> okay, so what's not covered under original Medicare is your prescription drugs. That's why they require you to take a Part D drug plan. Also, routine dental care is not covered. But if you got in a car accident and you, you know, got the airbag in the face and it done some damage, that would be covered because that's a medically necessary procedure not related to preventative dental care. Routine um, vision care and eyeglasses are not covered under original Medicare. However, you can get eye health um, exams once a year under preventative care covered at no cost to you. Um, in addition, if you had cataracts or something like that, something health related to the eye, you're going to be covered. Okay. I know all the parts of our body that tend to wear away as we age, seeming like I'm telling you is not covered, but they are covered in a way, but in a way not. So I want to explain exactly what original Medicare is going to cover compared to an Advantage plan, for example. Hearing aids are also not covered, unfortunately, under original Medicare, and foreign travel is not covered. So you would want to make sure um, if you're traveling abroad, First, pack me. <laughs> I want to go. But also, um, if you're traveling abroad, just know that you do not have coverage when, once you leave American Soul. Cosmetic procedures and treatments, again, are not covered, and long-term care is not covered under Medicare. That's very important to understand because long-term care is defined as staying inpatient at a skilled nursing facility um, or other facility longer than 100 days. Okay, so... Unfortunately, that's not covered. Now, let's talk about the cost. So under Part A, you do, um, usually you do not pay a premium, a monthly fee for Part A. If you've worked 10 years, that's going to be free. If you've not worked 10 years, you can buy into Part A, um, and that's a, a little unusual, but there are folks who do want to purchase and buy into Part A that weren't eligible. But you will pay the first $1,600. That is your annual deductible under Part A. 
And once you've paid that, you're going to get up to 60 days of inpatient hospitalization at no additional copay, which I think is pretty good because you can probably run up 1,600 in the first 10 minutes you're in the hospital. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so I think that's pretty good because you're going to get up to 60 days of inpatient care at no additional cost to you. Beyond that, day 61 um, through 90 are a per day copay. Let's see if I can even read it. I think it's $400 a day and $800 per day um, beyond day 91. Now, once you hit day 91, 91 through 150 are once in a lifetime reserved days. Meaning that Medicare is only going to pay that many days in a calendar year once in your life. Um, and beyond that, it's gonna, they're going to be considering that to be long-term care. So it's very important that you understand long-term care is not going to be covered under original Medicare. All right, so under Part B, there is a calendar year deductible. Um, so your Part B deductible this year is $226 for the calendar year. Once you've met that $226 Part B deductible, you're going to pay 20%. The federal government will pay 80%. But it's not quite that simple. Boy, I wish I could tell you it was, but it's not, never is. So there are some things called excess charges that doctors can charge, and those are 100% your problem. I know, don't, please don't throw anything at me. <laughs> I don't make the rules. But um, excess charges can be non existent in some providers, and then others can nickel and dime and put a whole lot of extra charges on there. So you want to make sure that you're thinking about that when you're planning what could potentially happen if you keep original Medicare, okay? So excess charges are 100% you, but you'll pay your deductible and then you'll pay approximately 20%, um, which I still think is a decent insurance, right? Okay, so now you might say, well, is there a cap? No, under original Medicare, your 20% continues to go. So if you have a really good health year and you hardly went to the doctor, it doesn't really feel that bad, right? Because preventative care was covered at 100%, so you weren't worried about that. But you went to the doctor a couple of times, she paid you $226 deductible, and then you were paying 20%. But if you have a really bad year, you probably will feel the sting. So that's why a lot of times we recommend folks consider a supplemental plan or Medigap policy. You'll hear them called both things, and they're also A, B, C, D, I know the alphabet again, but, <laughs> but they are your secondary insurance, so they pay after Medicare pays. And the great thing about it is if you get the right plan for you, um, you know, different plans pay different things, which is a good and bad thing, so you still need someone to kind of help you weigh out your decision-making process here, but some plans will pay absolutely everything that Medicare didn't pay except for your Part B deductible, so the $226. And those plans have a wide range of prices, and there are lots of companies that sell them, and there are lots of things you need to consider when you're shopping for a Medigap policy. And that's where we can really help you, because we can kind of some information for you and let you know what companies can legally sell you which plans, what the plans look like. So we do have a little chart that shows each plan and what they're going to cover. Now plan C and F are no longer available if you're new to Medicare this year. So those were only folks that were um, Medicare eligible before 2020. Okay, so as of 2020 those are no longer available. Um, the most comprehensive plan with all the check boxes would be Plan G. And we see a lot of folks, it's a very popular plan, a lot of folks will select a Plan G. It's the only one besides the Plan G high deductible that's going to cover excess charges. So that's why a lot of times you'll see people select that plan. And that plan ranges on the low end um, just under $100. And on the upper end, it can be over $300 on that, depending on your age. All right, so in addition to that supplemental plan, you're going to um, need to pick up a Part D drug plan if you keep original Medicare. Now, Part D drug plans, they change every year. It's very important that once you're on Medicare, that you're going to review your plans annually. Now, I'm going to go back to our supplement chart just for a second. 
you will not review your supplement annually. That's a pick it and stick it situation. And I'm going to explain how I say that. So with the supplements, you are guaranteed issue the first six months that you become Medicare Part B eligible. So when your Medicare Part B starts, you're on a time clock. You've got six months to select a supplement or secondary plan where they cannot ask you any health questions, they cannot hold pre-existing conditions against you, and they cannot turn you down for a policy. That is very important to note, especially if you're like me and you have a lot of chronic things or you're swimming around in a whole lot of uh, chronic illness gene pools. Um, it's important that you jump on board with that plan initially if you've got any chronic health problems because after that six month window if you try to, to um, obtain a supplemental plan at that point you are subject to medical underwriting they can pull your medical history they can send a nurse to your home they can require you to have a physical they can refuse to cover pre-existing conditions for a time period um, so it's basically they're going to decide if you're worth the risk of coverage and they can say no and they have said no <laughs> before. So make sure that if you're going to go with original Medicare and you're thinking you want a supplement, go ahead and probably investigate that right off the bat and decide whether or not you're going to do that. Um, but your Part D drug coverage, you'll probably pick one of those right off the bat. They start out at $4.50 a month this year, and they range all the way over to over $100 a month depending on the drugs you take, um, will help you decide which plan is the best for you. And again, SHIP is here to help you navigate those options. We have what we call the plan finder tool that we use through Medicare.gov, and we plug in all of your medications. So we're gonna ask you lots of nosy questions when you come in. Just know we are HIPAA compliant. We're not gonna divulge any information. We don't sell our list to anybody, anything like that. We're required not to do that. Um, so we are a safe person to talk to about your um, insurance options, but we are going to ask you lots of nosy questions. What medicines do you take? How often do you take them? What pharmacy do you like? Um, you know, do you have chronic health conditions? Because all of this plays into that decision-making factor, and it's going to help us lead you around uh, these waters a lot easier, right? So with a Medicare Part D drug plan, they are private companies who have contracts with Medicare to cover your prescription drugs. Um, they're not going to cover anything over the counter. It does have to be a prescription and unavailable over the counter. So even if you have a prescription for, um, like I take Claritin, which used to be only prescription, but now anybody can buy it. So Medicare wouldn't cover Claritin now, even with the prescription. So you have to make sure that it's um, gonna be uh, non over the counter medications, but they will help you. Those plans do change annually. They have premiums and they also have co-pays. And you can enroll in a Part D drug plan the same time that you're enrolling in your Medicare. As soon as you have a Medicare number, you can go ahead and hit the plan finder and enroll in a drug plan. And the drug plan would begin the same time that your Medicare begins. So it's important to try to get this enrollment process done. Again, we want to encourage you to start the three months prior to your 65th birth month. You know, you can wait, but you probably don't want to wait because you want to have time to make all these other decisions. So if you started three months ahead, by then you've already got that Social Security um, office visit out of the way or that phone call out of the way and your card has arrived in the mail and now that you have your card you can sit down with the ship person and we can talk to you about your drug plans or your advantage plan options and help you enroll in that and that helps you get all of this taken care of ahead of time. Now of course um, annual enrollment is every year October 15th through December 7th and you can make changes to your drug plan or start a drug plan for the first time. So if you did not take a drug plan initially, open enrollment every year, you can jump on board then and take that drug plan. If you did not take a drug plan and were not covered any other way, so um, you could potentially have that penalty for the rest of your life, but it depends. Some coverage is counted. Um, so if you had an employer group health plan that covered you and you kept the drug portion of that, you could sometimes be exempt from that penalty. 
So you would just need to talk with the Social Security Office about that to determine whether or not you were able to delay taking your drug plan. Also, of course, there's a Medicare Advantage open enrollment period, which is January 1st through March the 31st. Um, that is an opportunity to go to a drug plan if you're leaving an Advantage plan only. So you can't say, well, I have a drug plan, but now I got on this new medication in January and it's February, so I'm going to change my drug plan. You can't do that until the next open enrollment. So if you had an Advantage plan, however, and the Advantage plan was not going to cover that medicine and you wanted to go back to original, you could do that during the Advantage plan open enrollment. Um, so the other terms would be if you qualify for a special enrollment period, anytime you're able to enroll in Medicare for the first time, you're also able to go ahead and take your drug plan. Now, you might be thinking, wow, that's a lot of expense that I wasn't expecting with Medicare. And it is. So we want you to know there are some special health programs that are available, and one of them is the Part D Extra Help. That's literally what it's called, it's the Extra Help Program. It does provide assistance if you have low income and limited resources, and that eligibility is determined by the Social Security Administration. So they're going to look at your resources and income and they're going to determine if you are eligible for that, you will actually be able to make additional changes to your drug plan. Three additional times. You get to make one change per quarter the first three quarters of the year and that change would become effective the following month. Um, now what extra help does is it actually can lower or even eliminate your premiums, your deductible and your co-pays. So it's very important to be screened for that to determine if your income guidelines would allow you to receive extra help. All right, um, so now let's talk about the second path, the Advantage Plan path. That's what we hear about on TV. All of the people who call you every day, they're, you know, that's, that's your one call you can count on getting every day. <laughs> You're going to get a call from somebody talking to you about an Advantage Plan. And so let's talk about what an Advantage Plan really is. And, and what the advantages and maybe disadvantages are to an Advantage plan. Advantage plans are managed care. Very important to understand what managed care means. Very much like an employer group health plan, it's going to put you in a network based on your zip code. No other way I can say that except you will have to comply with the network to make the plan pay the best. Doesn't mean you have to comply. You can certainly choose to go outside of your network, but if you do, some plans may force you to pay all of that. Some plans may only force you to pay a half or 70%. Um, it, won't, it won't be to your advantage to go outside of the network. I can promise you that. So if you have an advantage plan, it's very important that you're investigating those plans during open enrollment and that you're selecting a plan that you know is going to work for you. So you want to pick one that your doctors are in the network, unless you are just very flexible, which some people are. They, they do change their doctors often, and that's okay. Um, if you're very rigid about the doctor's practice that you want to go on, you might want to even ask your doctor's office, what plans do you participate in? because you want to know that the plan is going to pay for your medical providers. The other thing about an Advantage plan is that in addition to um, a network, sometimes they have additional things that you have to comply with. For example, you may need a referral to see a specialist. Not always, but some plans. Some plans may ask you for prior authorization which means your doctor has to fill out a paper and send in requesting permission for you to have certain tests or procedures. And that's pretty standard in employer-based plans, for example. You can't just go have a CAT scan or MRI. You have to have prior authorization. So it's very similar with an Advantage plan. There are a few hoops to jump through. They're not impossible, and they work for a lot of folks. So I think the, the advice here, as far as the disadvantages, is just to be careful that you're researching the plan adequately and that you know that it's going to meet your needs. Now what they will do is most of the plans require no additional premium, none at all, which means that you pay your $164.90 for Part B, 
to Uncle Sam, and then the federal government's going to give that to the company that you chose, and they're going to take that and nothing more. Uh, some plans do have a little additional premium, and some plans even give you some of that Part B back. You didn't even have to pay it all. But you have to look at what they're going to offer you for it. They are going to cap and give you a maximum amount of pocket for the year, so that's an advantage to an advantage plan. You can say, well, at the worst possible state, if I stay in the network, at least I'll never pay more than this dollar amount per year. But that dollar amount is in the thousands. It could be 5,000, it could be 9,000, it could be 20,000. Depends on the plan you choose, right? So it's important to investigate that. Also, you're gonna look at what are they gonna charge me copay-wise. So instead of like an 80-20 split that you had with original Medicare, Advantage plans are often going to give you a copay system. They're going to say, well, I'll let you see your regular provider for free. So as long as they're in the network, your primary care may be zero or it may be five or 15 bucks, depending on the plan. But when you see a specialist, you're going to pay 35 or 55. It depends upon, again on the plan. So you're going to really want to look at Advantage plans closer. It's going to take us a little longer to help you research those plans and what options they have. Now, I know you hear on TV how you get all kinds of free stuff when you have an Advantage plan. Yes and no. I know. Y'all just want to hurt me. Everything I say, I say, but. There's always a but, right? Um, so with Advantage plans, some things are available if you have Medicare and Medicaid, and only if you have both Medicare and Medicaid. And then some plans will say, yes, I'm going to give you vision, but I'm only giving you a limited amount of vision coverage. So you, have, you can get glasses, but only once every three years. Or you can get glasses, but they have to be less than $250. Um, yeah, I'll give you some dental, but I'm only going to give you $2,000 worth of dental per year. Does that make sense? Right. So it's not that it's not there. It is there, but there's caveats to it. You can't just get an unlimited amount of things. Um, so, and you'll hear about free groceries and, and you know, over-the-counter medications. And yes, some of the plans offer these benefits and some of them offer them only to Medicaid and Medicare dual eligible clients. So you need to understand exactly what the plan is really going to give you personally before you listen to your neighbor who says they get everything free. It's not always the case, okay? So you have to be a very wise consumer when you're shopping for Advantage plans. Um, but Advantage plans, really, using the network can lower the amount of money you spend in a year. Now, I can take the same person who um, decided that they were going to take an Advantage plan, and one year that Advantage plan really, really, really had been paying almost nothing for the year. And the next year, they were hitting the maximum out of pocket. It depends on your health and it depends on the things that are happening in your life. So some years you may love having an Advantage plan, other years you may hate it. And so I just want you to kind of be aware of that, that it's no different than having a Medicare supplement plan with your original Medicare. You know, some years you're paying that premium on your loan, you never went to the doctor except for preventative care. And then the next year, you may need a new shoulder and a new knee, and you're turning into a robot person. And all of these surgeries were 100% covered by your supplement. And you're like, wow, that was really worth what I paid for that supplement. So it can hit you hard either way. Right? There's no perfect answer, and we don't have a crystal ball. So unless you have ESP, I don't know how you're going to make the decision without just going with your gut. You've got to ask yourself, what's the risk of you know, using this to the maximum out of pocket versus paying the premium and using it that way. So you're, you're going to think about it in terms of what's going on in your health today and what you think might be coming down the road. All right, so when and how do you enroll in an advantage plan? Well, the same way you did everything else. When you initially enroll, if you hit a special enrollment window or during your Medicare um, annual open enrollment, you can choose an Advantage plan, or during the Medicare Advantage open enrollment, if you already have an Advantage plan, you can switch. So you have a lot of opportunities to make some changes here or to enroll in an Advantage plan. 
But the important thing to note is that Advantage plans like your drug plans must be looked at annually because they change drastically one year to the next. So it's very important to understand that the networks can change. In fact, the networks can change in the middle of the year. So it's important to note those changes. So during your annual open enrollment period, by all means sit down with the SHIP counselor and go over that options again. See if that plan is still going to be the best plan for the next year. All right, so just kind of a recap, original Medicare versus the Medicare Advantage path, they're both going to cover hospital and medical. But if you have an Advantage plan, you'll want to select one that also includes a drug plan. Um, with original Medicare, you have to select a standalone drug plan. Okay, so if you have original Medicare, it's going to directly provide the coverage, and you're not going to have any hoops to jump through, you're not going to have a network to worry about, but you are going to have the expense of Part B, which this year is $164.90, and then you're going to have the expense of picking a drug plan. And then potentially, you might go with a secondary or supplement insurance, which could be another $100, $125 a month, depending, and that's going to increase as you age. Now, with the Advantage plan, you're probably not going to pay anything additional with that Advantage plan. Most plans, most folks can find a plan where they're not going to need to pay an additional premium, which is good. Um, and they're going to include drug coverage if you pick the right plan. But in addition to this, you might also have some dental and some vision. You might need to pay a little bit more for dental and vision. It depends on the plan. This year, a lot of the plans included it at no additional cost which was good, um, but where you're not paying those premiums, you are paying more co-pays. So you're going to have the co-pays that you need to worry about in the networks. So that's kind of the breakdown. And then Medigap or supplement plans compared to Advantage plans are very different because a Medigap or supplemental plan only works with original Medicare and covers Medicare covered things. Um, but it's your percent of that. So your 20% would be covered by a supplement policy if you had that policy. Um, versus a Medicare Advantage, you don't have any secondary, you don't have a drug plan in addition to that. You just have the Advantage plan and it, it's all inclusive. It's going to take care of everything. You're just going to pay your part of it. So there are some additional um, programs out there that can help you to afford Medicare. So a lot of folks would hear $164.90 for Medicare Part D, and that's kind of a shock, right? Because we're really not thinking about it. We've paid FICA taxes, and we don't realize there's also going to be a premium for Medicare Part B. So if that is really beyond your means financially, there is a program called the Medicare Savings Program. It's not actually full Medicaid, but it's a type of Medicaid that pays for the Part B premium on your behalf. And then there's actual Medicaid, which would not only cover your premium, but would cover your 20% and that part of that, so you wouldn't need a supplement in that case. So with Medicare and Medicaid, um, it, it's kind of going to look at your income, it's going to look at your resources and your assets. So it's important that you're screened for any program that you might be eligible for, because there are some programs that we can help you to apply for. And here at SHIP, we don't apply for Medicaid, but we will help you apply for the Medicare Savings Program as well as the Extra Health Program through the Social Security Office. So we can help you apply for these programs. We can also talk to you a little bit about the screening process and help you decide it if, if you should apply. So I want to talk a little bit about preventative care because I mentioned earlier how Medicare is going to pay for preventative care at no cost to you. And I think that's really important because we tend to think if we're going to have to pay all these co-pays, well, maybe I can just let that go. But obviously, you're going to do better if you're taking care of yourself preventative health. So preventative health is covered at 100%, but it's important to understand the difference between preventative and diagnostic. So the best and worst example is a colonoscopy. <laughs> so when a doctor is doing a colonoscopy, if he finds a polyp or she, they're going to take that out immediately. While they're there, you kind of want them to, right? And so at that point, that is no longer a preventative colonoscopy. It is now a diagnostic, right? So that's the difference. But obviously, we don't want them to do it twice. 
So we, we want them to take care of it while they're there. But that is the difference. And it's similar with mammograms. If you think you feel something and you mention that to the doctor, even though it's been a year and you're thinking you're going to get your preventative mammogram, well, it's now diagnostic because they're exploring what you thought you felt. Does that make sense? So you have to be careful. Preventative and diagnostic are two very different things. And so I just want you to kind of be aware of that, that you can receive your vaccines and all your preventative blood work per year, um, an annual health exam. All of those are covered at no cost under Medicare, whether it's original or whether you're going with an Advantage plan, doesn't matter. That's one of the things that they've built into this program, that you can have preventative care at no cost if you have Medicare. So please take care of preventative care. Um, I wanted to speak a little bit about the Inflation Reduction Act, which started this year in January. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about it, but what I do want to say is that this year they focused on insulin and they focused on um, vaccines. And that means if you have Medicare, you should be able to attain vaccinations at no cost to you and no copay. And your insulin would have been capped at 35. Now, it's not exactly that simple because not every insulin is covered by every plan, but every plan must offer at least one insulin at $35 or less, okay? Which I think is good. So that means if you know which insulin your doctor's got you on, we can plug that into our database and figure out which one of them will cover that insulin at $35. It's a little more complicated if you take two insulins because we have to make sure that that company is going to provide both of those at 35 or less. And it's very possible. I, most all of my clients can find both insulins on one formulary. Okay, so I don't want you to think, oh no, it's only going to be one of them. That's not necessarily true. Depends on the plan, but we will look at their formulary or their list of covered medications. And as long as it's one of the ones that they cover and it's on the formulary, they have to give it to you at 35 or less, which is great. So we, I think that's a big deal. It's very, very helpful. But each year for the next few years until 2029, they're going to hit a different list of medications each year. This year they focused on insulin, and so um, there will be different Part D drugs added each year to cap the amount that you're going to spend out of pocket for expensive medications. So that's a good thing. All right, and the same thing is going to happen with your vaccines. It will need to be on your formulary if you're getting your vaccines at a pharmacy. It will run through your Part D drug plan or your Part C Advantage plan. So it would need to be on the formulary. Like if you wanted to get that Shingrex shot, for example, that one's very popular. We've got to make sure that it's on the formulary in order for it to be free. But if you get it through your doctor's office, it's automatically free because it runs under Part B. So just run under Part B. All right. So the next thing I want to tell you about is the North Carolina Senior Medicare Patrol Program. It helps with fraud, um, it helps to prevent Medicare fraud, waste, and abuse. So as part of SHIP, the SMP program can provide you education on helping you to prevent Medicare fraud, abuse, and waste. And this is very big because, of course, they're going to talk to you about protecting yourself from anyone stealing your Medicare number, but also detecting fraud and how to report fraud. And so we encourage you to reach out to us if you do suspect that anyone has stolen your Medicare number or uh, you've got a provider that's fraudulently billing you um, or double billing you or anything like that. If there's anything that you should report, um, we can investigate that through the Department of Insurance. Um, it is a 68 billion dollar a year cost to the taxpayer for Medicare fraud. So we want to make sure we're taking care of that. That's a big ticket to pay every year. So we want to make sure that we're taking care of that. We're watching those Medicare statements that tells you exactly what was billed and what was done. You want to make sure that it's accurate and you're reporting it if it's not. Um, all righty. So there are lots of places that you can get help, but Medicare.gov is probably your best resource. So you can go online to Medicare.gov and you can find out 
all kinds of things like what Medicare covers, what it doesn't cover, how to enroll, what plans are available. You can use the same plan finder tool that we use when you come in to see us and you can see exactly what your medicines should cost you when you go to the pharmacy and what your provider should be billing you for co-pays if you have an Advantage plan. And so it's very important. In addition, it will contact, it will give you the contact information for each plan so that you can call them directly. Like, let's say you signed up for a plan but you never got a card and you can't figure it out. You could go on here, it would give you the contact information and you would know who to call to request that card. Alrighty. We do encourage you to create a Medicare.gov account and that's something that we will do if you come to us and we're helping you with your Medicare options. We're gonna create that account on your behalf. And of course, we'll give you the username and password. <laughs> but we encourage you to also do that. So even if you don't use us as your um, education link and you're, you're not coming to us for a yearly counseling, we would encourage you to go online and create this account so that you can pull up not only the plan finder tool that we use to help you locate a drug plan or an advantage plan, but in addition to that, it's your, it's your source to see all of your explanation of benefits. You can log in, you can see every provider, everything billed to you. Um, in addition, you, there's links to pay your Medicare bills online. Everything you need is there. So I do encourage you to create that account. It really will help you watch for fraud. And then, of course, I'm always going to plug this. If you would like to become a SHIP volunteer, we need you. <laughs> we really need you. Um, and it, it, we provide you all the training that you need, and you get to make lifelong connections to people that you get to help. And I'm sure Wayla will tell you it's very rewarding, very fulfilling to know that you're helping someone make a decision that's so important about their health. Because without adequate coverage, we're not going to take as good care of ourselves. So it's important that we're helping each other with that. So I encourage you, if you want to become a SHIP counselor, talk to Waylon, and he will get you an application, and he'll help you with that. And um, if you need additional help, of course, your local contact will be um, the senior center here in McDonough County. But in addition, we have the SHIP call center. It's 855 Sorry, 408, I want it looked like a six without my glasses. One, two, one, two. <laughs> Stop, we really change our number. Um, but 408-1212 is your hotline number that gets you the Raleigh office, and we have folks at the call center who can help answer Medicare questions. Um, in addition, you can call Medicare or the Social Security Administration, and I've placed these numbers here. Medicaid is one, or Medicare is 1-800-633-4227. And the Social Security Office is 1-800-772-1213. And then you can always come here. Every year, once you're Medicare eligible, you'll probably receive one of these in the mail automatically, but the Medicare and you book is a definitive source for you. Waylon has lots of copies here. If you would like one, he'll give you one. Um, but that is your go-to resource. If you want to know if chiropractic care is covered, it's in there. Or you can go to Medicare.gov and ask that question there. It can also tell you. But the Medicare and you handbook really has all of the information you're going to need each year. Any changes that happened are located there. So it's really your go-to resource. And I encourage you to keep that handy and look at it and refer to it as you need to. And again, you can contact us Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 at our Raleigh office. Thank you, Aylan. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, thank you to Billy Lister for giving the presentation today on Medicare 101, the basics. Uh, I am Waylon Freebor for the McDowell Senior Center. I am the McDowell's, uh, McDowell County uh, SHIP Coordinator. If you are needing assistance, uh, this is for our viewers uh, watching this. If you need assistance in McDowell County, please contact the McDowell Senior Center. Our telephone number is 828-659-0823. And if you live in the Old Fort area, you can contact the AC Bud Hogan Community Center. Their telephone number is 828-668-4867. And there are ship counselors at both sites will be able to assist you. I'd like to thank the viewers that are watching here today and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thank you.